Hey there YouTube, welcome back to another video. Uh, again, uh, this is going to be uh, different to sort of like my normal videos, so it's not Bolt Action or, or Saga. Uh, it is in fact actually the last sort of gaming system that I kind of got into. Um, and uh, I mean I haven't actually got the, the box itself to the, the actual starter set that I picked up. is actually, uh, I'm uh, unable to get hold of the moment because it's buried under a whole load of crap. But um, it's basically Gangs of Rome. Um, when I first sort of saw this game, I wasn't particularly that interested in it um, because I haven't really, I never really had, um, you know, I've got no Roman scenery. Uh, I've, I've never really um, had it, although I would love to collect a Roman Hell Caesar army. Um, you know, I've never actually sort of delved into Romans. Um, but when I saw sort of like the, the, the sort of the, the price for the sort of starter set, it kind of drew me in, drew me towards it because it's actually a really good value set. Uh, you actually get like a full version of the rule book. You get uh, seven figures, and you also get like this amazing piece of terrain, which is uh, I think it's worth about sort of thirty pounds within its own right. Um, and apparently, it's supposed to be. I watched a couple of sort of play reports, and it's quite a really a really sort of simple game to pick up. Um, and it looks really good fun to play. So uh, I kind of picked up the starter set and, and uh, ended up getting um, a whole bunch of figures to make up sort of two gangs and a, and a whole bunch of civilians. So let's uh, start off by showing you the piece of terrain uh, that came in the actual starter box set. And this is it here. It's, a, it's quite a big, big piece of terrain. And you actually get, also you get this like... Uh, uh, scaffolding and you also get a just push that back a little bit a Roman crane as well now I'm not 100% sure if I've stringed this up correctly but uh, I think it looks it look, I think it looks okay I think uh, what you're supposed to do is you, you basically use these uh, pegs to tie it off to, to, the, to your required sort of height um, and then obviously this is kind of a, it's not really a pulley, but it's kind of a uh, an assist to help the rope uh, go up and down uh, easier. Um, and I just, this, all of this stuff here is actually stuff that came um, as sort of scrap pieces uh, from the actual building of this. So um, I think uh, for, um, you know, it's almost... Uh, for, for a piece of train that's almost the price of the actual start set itself, I think that's uh, a really good start uh, uh, to um, you know to get you going into into this into sort of collecting some some Roman stuff. Uh, you also get like um, like I said the seven figures. I'll show you those now. You get one exclusive figure, which is uh, which is kind of tied into the scenario um, that the actual starter box set is kind of based around, which is about this sort of ruined temple. And it's this guy here. Uh, I can't remember his name, uh, but he's he's meant to be like a, a temple guard, and he he basically like throws. If you get too close to him, um, he basically starts throwing these sort of roof tiles at your characters. Um, I try and get close and uh, look at him. He's an okay figure. He's you know, he's a little bit a little bit boring. He's he's just more or less just wearing a. Uh, sort of Roman uh, sort of civilian cl clothing and um, he's got a very sort of ghoulish uh, sort of uh, ghoul-esque type of face uh, and obviously he's holding a a, a roof tile but he, I think he came out okay um, again I didn't have uh, any really ex real experience of, of painting Romans um, so I kind of had to do a little bit of uh, internet research to try and get some sort of colour schemes for their for various civilian clothing and uh, nobles clothing and stuff. Uh, but I think he came out okay. And of course, um, for basing, I've used uh, I actually used a combination of things. Um, and this particular guy's uh, got milli put, uh, but I also used plastic putty as well to to actually um, scrape out flooring. So. And if I put him, you can see that if I put him in the doorway there, uh, he's actually uh, actually sort of quite small in comparison to the size of this building. 
and it was uh, it was an interesting build as well. But you can see that's so, so that's a really great start to the, the sort of a starter box box set for Gangs of Rain. Uh, we'll start next with the uh, the actual gang fighters. So this is uh, the first three uh, fighters that you get. Uh, so we bring bring them in and I'll show you, show you each of them. Um, this guy I kind of made the sort of the leader of, of, of the first of, of uh, the first gang. So we've got this quite cool looking, uh, um, very sort of Spartacus-y looking guy. Um, obviously I'm with a uh, Gladius. And I gave him a, a nice piece of uh, bronze leg armor there. Um, I think the sort of the premise of these guys is that these are basically kind of uh, basically street thugs um, trying to kind of make a name for themselves, um, and you basically you know kind of within the sort of the campaign system you can kind of um, build yourself up from a lowly uh, rat on the streets right the way up to your ultimate goal of sort of getting yourself into the sort of uh, the senate. Um, so this guy is kind of the leader of the three. Uh, I think he's quite a cool figure. And like I say, uh, he's actually got a sculpted um, head and hand uh, ready, ready fixed. Where if you were to buy a normal blister, um, you would actually get a choice of heads and also uh, a choice of weapons. So that's the first guy. And these guys, um, they actually come with like, uh, like almost like character cards. And uh, the sort of cool thing about it is that every blister pack you buy comes with randomised cards, so um, you're always kind of uh, collecting sort of new uh, gang members that you can uh, sort of recruit into your gang. So here's the second guy. Again, a uh, very, very basic. He's actually just armed with a rock. And I think he came out pretty cool, actually. The sort of colour that I used for his uh, uh, clothing was uh, as, as a Italian tankery again. Uh, this, this I actually used uh, Italian tankery more for uh, my saga and and uh, uh, dystopian wars and and these figures than than I actually used uh, for anything to do with Italian tanks, which is kind of uh, ironic. And then the third character, because there's also uh, female characters as well. So here we have the only female in this particular little group of three. And you can also see that the, the, the bases have actually got these sort of cutouts. Um, they, they come with sort of like a, it's an MDF base with a, like a piece of card that sticks on the bottom and makes this lip here. It's actually got like a cutout. And you can actually put your wound, you put your wound tokens in this side and your sort of identification number in the other um, so that you can uh, identify your gang member when it's on the table. Really quite cool. Um, of course, the, the other thing that kind of sort of drew me towards this was the fact that there was actually uh, female fighters as well. It was just, it wasn't all, all guys, um, and you can see she's not particularly well armed. This, this particular figure, but again, it's not the sort of system that is uh, uh, you know what you see is what you get. You, you kind of uh, um, it's possible to to have uh, weapons other than what the actual uh, character is uh, armed with. So that's the female character. Okay. So next up we're going to the second uh, bunch of three. And this guy is the uh, guy that I made the leader of my second group of three. So let's just get it to focus. Come on. There we go. Uh, again, quite a cool, cool uh, poised or posed figure. Um, he's got his gladius kind of hiding behind his back. I've given him like a white, uh, um, white clothing uh, with sort of uh, black leather uh, arm arm uh, braciers and uh, belt, and he's got sort of a normal pair of kind of rimass sandals on. Um, and I thought this guy was quite regal looking, which is why I decided to make him the leader. And you can see that I have actually painted eyes on these guys. Um, I, I think 
bolt action is the only sort of system that uh, I, I tend not to paint eyes on um, because I think you can kind of get away with it and also the fact that a lot of guys are wearing helmets um, actually makes getting to the eyes uh, quite difficult and um, to tell the truth the sort of shading normally does quite a good job um, but for sort of uh, more individual character-esque type games um, I tend to paint eyes so let's bring up the second guy from this uh, this gang so here we have this guy um, I can't remember the name of this weapon um, but it's uh, it's basically uh, a sort of an arm extension with a, a side uh, sort of a, um, a crescent moon shaped blade on it um, and you can see that he's got lots of uh, sort of cloth padding on um, and I kind of decided to give this guy a sort of more a turquoisey type uh, uh, clothing and uh, he's got like a headband on I think he's uh, quite a cool figure so that's him and again uh, melee put for the base um, all these guys I believe have got melee put for their base because it was like my first sort of experimentation uh, and now the final uh, character from the star set which is another female so you get uh, two females uh, and uh, four guys and she has got I think it's just like a weight in a bag so it's kind of like a bludgeon as a weapon not particularly amazing uh, and I gave her kind of a I can't remember the name of the actual colour but it's, kind of, it's almost like a very uh, sort of like a brick red terracotta I think it is actually thinking about it um, I think that looks quite cool. So that is the uh, the th final member of the starter box set. So you can see that you get quite a cool little uh, um, arrangement of figures just in the uh, starter box sets uh, alone, um, and uh, of course a great piece of terrain as well. So next up. Uh, we'll go into, um, I'll, I'll go into sort of like the some of the civilians that I've got. Um, the actual game itself works um, with uh, what they call mobs of civilians, which are basically like five civilians on a, on a, on a giant base. Um, and these guys kind of mill around uh, randomly um, and they can kind of get in your way and they can attack you, they can block line of sight, they can do all sorts of stuff to sort of hinder or help your, your gang members. Um, and uh, so I've got actually three stands of um, of mobs of civilians. So this is this is like um, I think this was actually the the third one that I did. Um, but you can see that it comes with like this. I can't remember the actual dimensions of this place, um, but it's pretty big, and it holds all five uh, characters. And now I believe this particular. Uh, uh, flooring is uh, done with plastic putty so you can see that it kind of looks quite cool it's not quite got the um, the continuation of the uh, street tiles that the actual characters have got but uh, it still looks kind of cool and you can see that there's all sorts of uh, um, types of civilians uh, within this stand um, I kind of designed uh, these two here to be kind of like husband and wife and they're, they're sort of like the, the most noble that are actually on the stand. The rest are kind of uh, more civilians. But I think it came out quite cool. And uh, adding to the uh, um, my classic uh, way of doing things is that I haven't actually played a game of this yet. Um, even though I've actually uh, finished painting all the figures. Uh, so let's bring up another, obviously another stand of uh, civilians, another mob. So here we have another mob of civilians, and again, all different characters, and I think they, again, uh, came out pretty cool. There's obviously a, a rebel-rousing old crone, and you've got this sort of, uh, I guess he's kind of like, uh, maybe like street watch or a uh, watchman of some kind, uh, sort of coming up uh, in, in the background looking a bit shady. And one sort of uh, more uh, noble, 
Well, I suppose the, 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 these two at the front here um, are both kind of uh, quite noble uh, Roman civilians um, mixed in with a, a motley crew and a, a, a motley crew of an old crone, a trader of some sort, and the uh, the odd watchman guy in the background. So there's those. I think I think they came out pretty cool. These these uh, base civilians. When you first get them, you kind of look at them and you think, well, hmm, you know, how can I get motivated just painting like civilian figures? But it's quite interesting to sort of uh, you know do some research into the, the, the sort of different colours of of Roman civilian clothing and stuff. So here we have the final uh, collection of mob. I only, I only got three uh, stands of mobs. Um, I think you can have a maximum of six um, for like really, really big games, but I probably won't get any more. Um, I think I've got one of each you can get uh, at the time. There might be... No, I think I have. I think I've, I think I've got one of each of the, uh, the ones that you can get. So this one obviously has got uh, a mother with a child. And uh, only one, uh, I suppose this guy could possibly be a, a, a sort of a more noble Roman, just hidden under his cape, and one another trader there holding a, a sack of grain or something, or wheat. And then the one sort of Roman guy at the front there, uh, who's obviously just walking through the market. And then you've got a couple of, uh, obviously the mother and the child, and the uh, this woman here who looks... Um, like she's about to maybe start some trouble. So that is the uh, three stands, and again, these guys have got plastic putty as uh, their base. So that's that. Uh, next up, we have uh, a figure, um, or a little set of figures, which came from, I believe it's War Games Foundry. Um, I actually picked up a piece of terrain, uh, which is called, um, I'm trying to think of the actual name of it, but it's basically like a sort of slave auction uh, stage set, um, and you get basically you get this, uh, that's my phone ringing in the background, uh, you get this cool looking cage uh, with, a, with a moving door, and you also get a removable... Uh, top on the actual cage itself and you get the actual stage and the uh, steps that lead up to it. I think it's a really cool little piece of terrain and I don't think it was particularly expensive either. Um, so I, I, I brought that and I thought well I really need some kind of uh, slave seller to, uh, to mount it and although the company that uh, produces the miniatures for uh, Gangs of Rome uh, do actually have their own uh, slave trader set. I, I wasn't particularly uh, impressed with it. Um, so I picked up from War Games Foundry this set called Mastermus the, the Slave Trader and you basically get uh, two, four, five, you get six figures. Uh, this is actually uh, Mas Maximus, the actual slave trader. I think he's quite cool. I, I, I really do like this guy. In fact, actually, the whole set's really cool. Um, so we've got this, uh, the actual slave trader himself, Maximus. So we we'll put him on there. Uh, and then you get uh, three uh, slaves. So we've got a um, a slave of Celtic or Ghoul descent here. i have kind of given him like very sort of dull, dusk clothing. So that's the sort of ghoul or the Celtic slave, or the barbarian slave. Uh, then we have a, uh, I guess a guy from um, the sort of, uh, you know, from, from maybe sort of the African African areas. Um, he looks quite mean. So we got him. He came out pretty cool, actually. I gave him again using that classic Italian tank crew uh, colour. And finally, well not finally actually, but finally for the slaves, uh, you get one female. So here she is, kind of quite cool looking. And then you actually get 
And on top of that, two uh, sort of civilians that um, are obviously uh, kind of at the auction. So I'll show you one of them. So here's one. Just your sort of basic sort of Roman noble guy. Um, and I quite like the way he's kind of looking up as if he's sort of uh, standing uh, looking up at the, the stage. So although he's like quite simple colours, I think he came out quite cool. And finally you get a female uh, audience member. And she's kind of obviously debating uh, whether to make a, a purchase or not. And I guess she's obviously probably of uh, of the nobility as well. Uh, but she's obviously got this sort of heavy cloak on. Um, so that is the sort of the loose figures that I got for, for maybe just for uh, sort of set dressing. Uh, so that's the sort of the slave trader part out of the way. Um, now the only thing that's kind of left now is to show you the um, kind of the rest of the the two gangs that are kind of built up. Um, I actually picked up a deal from, from the site um, where you get sort of ten, ten figures of your choice um, for, I can't remember the exact price, I think it was £40 maybe. So you got sort of, I think they're like £8 a blister. Um, and you actually get like uh, lots of gubbins with the actual figure itself. It's, it's, so you obviously get like the figure, you get the, a, a randomised uh, character card, you get um, a whole bunch of like equipment cards. Uh, you also get um, some MDF coins that, that are used for, for the equipment. Uh, and you also get some wound tokens as well. So you get quite a bunch of stuff. And obviously the, the sort of specialist stand. So we'll, we'll bring up uh, the first gang here. Uh, so let's bring them up. I'll just I'll put them all in, in shot first. And then I'll give you a closer look. So here we go. Now, uh, five of these guys. Um, let's just move the camera down a little bit. So these five. So out of these uh, six characters, five of them are from blisters, and one of them is like a special character that that you buy singly to add to your gang. Um, I decided to to get um, one of each of the the two uh, sort of special characters that I like to, to sort of leave my gangs. Um, so let's start with, let's just start with, we can start with, kind of start with anyone. So here we have uh, this guy here. Now I think this body is the same one as the one that was throwing the stone uh, from the starter set. So you can see that he's got a different head and he's got a different weapon. And I kind of position this so that the weapon's facing backwards to make him look more menacing. And I think it, I think it came out pretty cool. Uh, again, these characters are really sort of basic, you know, they're really easy to paint. Um, and it allows you to sort of spend a little bit more time sort of uh, doing some some sort of detail on their flesh, which is something that uh, you know when you're painting sort of large blocks of of uh, sort of armies of figures, sometimes your your sort of your flesh work is either there's not enough flesh to actually bother with, or um, you just sort of do enough to sort of get by. Um, but I'm certainly by no means uh, a master of shading and highlighting, but um, I, I think I, I think I can do a fair job, um, and I, I've certainly been uh, trying to learn to get better. Um, but again, this guy, I can't remember if this is really put or plastic putty on his, that I did for his base. But you can see that it perfectly does the job. Um, and I just had to obviously make sure that uh, I'm, I kept the sort of areas clear so that the little tokens would fit in. Um, so that's him. It's quite cool. Uh, next up we'll go for the special character. Uh, I can't remember what this guy's called. Um, but he's a very cool looking character. He's kind of like almost like a Roman uh, Roman soldier. So he's obviously some kind of veteran. He's got a shield under there. He's got his, his drawing as Gladius. He's pretty well uh, padded, and, and, and padded up and, and uh, got a nice piece of leg armour there. And I gave him this sort of uh, purple cloak to kind of make him like real regal. I think he's a really cool character and I kind of added this sort of uh, eagle motif on the back uh, to, to even make him look, look even more sort of uh, hardcore. 
So he's really cool. I really like this, this guy. Unfortunately, I can't remember the, the character's name, um, what, what he's actually called. But he's uh, he's basically you can, you can get him from the uh, uh, he's from the gangs of uh, of uh, Rome's uh, series of figures. And I, I kind of like I say made him I thought he was a really cool looking miniature, and I decided to make him like the leader of of, of the gang. So that's him. Uh, next up. We'll go for one of the females, and this particular uh, female has got a, uh, a shield, and she's got the eagle motif on, and she's got a gladius. And I gave her—I actually found this uh, pattern of, of of clothing on when I was doing some internet research, and I thought it was quite cool. It's kind of like pink with like white white uh, checkers, well, not quite checkers, but kind of just randomised white uh, squares. I thought it looked really cool, so I kind of replicated it. I think she came out really cool. And again, uh, she has got a uh, a random uh, a different head, and obviously a different weapon from the um, the actual character. That I'm not sure if I've actually got this particular body. Uh, from the start, so I think this might be one of the the, the the unique ones because all the all the guys that came in the starter set you can actually get as as uh, uh, normal gang members um, in, in blisters. So next up, we'll actually do uh, one of the um, this one is obviously instantly recognisable as uh, the same figure as this guy. And you can see that you can get like a totally different look um, by uh, obviously you completely changed his colour of skin, which I thought was a really cool cool idea when uh, when I completed it. Um, but you can see that it's the same figure, but a completely different look. And I was really chuffed with how this guy turned out. I can't remember. I think that weapon's called a sippy. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it's. Uh, Pretty nasty, nasty uh, weapon. Again, he's, he's basically exactly the same figure, but obviously um, a different head and a different weapon. I think he came out really cool. He's, he's probably one of my favourite, my favourite guys uh, from from that from this particular gang. Uh, so next up, we have another uh, female character. Um, this is obviously a, another one of the uh, the positions that's not in the starter set. It's kind of uh, running forward. Um, I'm not. I don't think that weapon's. I, must, I guess it must be like a short gladius because it's not the full. It's not like a full length one, uh, and it's too long to be a dagger. I'm not sure what the the, the proper Roman name for that for that would be. Uh, but yeah, quite a cool, uh, quite a cool character. Again, using that Italian tank crew uh, colour. And that's her. And finally, we have a, a female ganger um, with uh, wielding a gladius and a dagger. And she's got some pretty decent leg armour there. And I've given her like a slightly decorated uh, uh, clothing. And again, you know, pr pretty basic, very easy to paint. I think she came out really cool. So that's her. And now we will go into the final part, uh, which is the um, the second uh, group of uh, six um, that makes up my. Um, I kind of designed it so that the, the, the three guys from the starter box set uh, can be added to the gang. To make uh, uh, ten guys each, which is I think is a really good size for a gang actually, for a bit for sort of a bigger battle. So with this group, we'll start off with a special character for this group. Uh, this character here, I believe, she's called Tisiphone, the actual character. Um, again, it's like one of those ones you, you kind of buy. It's ready cast. And it's like a special character. 
so it obviously costs some more points but uh, I thought it was quite a cool, a cool uh, really cool character uh, gave her this sort of dark blue uh, outfit with a uh, sort of gold um, patterns at the bottom she's got like a, a, another one of those sort of short gladius and some nice um, braziers on her legs and a really cool uh, sort of face sculpt so that's the Tersiphony who in this case is not the leader of the army um, but she's definitely one of the uh, the uh, important members of the gang so next up we'll go for another female so here we have a uh, a sort uh, an axe wielding uh, or a hatchet wielding uh, female ganger and she's got sort of like boots on and she's got some padding on her arm and she's certainly she's ready to uh, chop up some of the opposition definitely again very simple I think I used that electric blue actually that I used for the sea and my dystopian was uh, set it's a really cool colour so that's her Uh, next up we'll go for another one of these uh, uh, duplicate figures as I call them so we have this guy here and obviously he is the uh, the blister pack version of the original leader and you can see that I've um, positioned his weapon hand different so that where this guy's got the weapon hand behind him uh, this guy has got it uh, forward. And I was really chuffed with the way that this guy came out. I think this was the first guy I painted, actually, after I finished the original six gang members. Um, and I decided to go for this sort of yellow yellow colour. I think it's yellow ochre I actually used. Um, and it's got, some, it's got some nice sort of silver uh, pattern down the bottom. He's uh, certainly not your your street rat. He's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit better than that. Maybe sort of like a you know low 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 leadership. Um, he's got his gladius. He's got some uh, some uh, a little bit of bracier and hand hand protection there. He hasn't. He doesn't have any uh, leg braciers, and he's only got a leather a leather bracer a leather bracer on his arm. But uh, quite cool. Uh, quite a cool character. So that's him. Uh, next up, we go for this guy, and uh, this guy is really cool. He's got a spear. Uh, I actually only got one spear out of all the figures that I had, uh, other loose weapons. Uh, Given him a, a shield as well. He's got uh, some real good. He's almost it looks as if he's a gladiator, really. Um, and uh, this guy is definitely uh, ready to fight. It's quite a long spear. I think he came out quite cool. So that's him. And then uh, two more figures to go. So here we have another uh, duplicated uh, position. So let's get zooming in. There we go. I think I've actually given him the same head sculpt as the original guy. Let's just uh, bring it in for a second and have a look. So you got him there. Come on, focus. There you go. Yeah, I think I, I think I have actually just by fluke put the same head sculpt on him. No, it is actually slightly different. Very very similar though. So let's just uh, zoom back on, on him there. There you go. You can see that he's, he's just got a slightly different shaped head. But he is very, very similar. But um, again, you know, quite an inspiring presence uh, of position. Um, I've given him a gladius again. He's, he's almost in exactly the same position as the other guy. I think his weapon's actually just turned a little bit. Um, 
uh, held a little bit straighter up rather than uh, tilted compared to the other figure. But this guy is uh, he's only actually the opposing the opposing gang, so uh, I think he came out quite cool. He's got a nice sort of padded fist there with some studs on, so you could you know, give somebody a good whack in the face. He's got uh, some a brass uh, leg protection there, leg armour. He's wearing these sort of uh, um, brown boots. Quite cool. And finally, for and uh, ending this video, which has been 35 minutes so far, uh, we have this uh, female going out here, who is the same position as the woman with the bludgeon. Is that right? No, it's not right. It's this character here. So you can see, again, same character, but given a different head and a different weapon, kind of makes it look like a different miniature. Uh, and obviously painted up differently. So that's, the kind of, that's what I really liked about this game, is the fact that you can get away with a small number of figures, and it can be played on a relatively small table as well. I think uh, most games are 3x3. I'll probably play on a 4x4. Uh, just because that's easier for me. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, actual Roman like cobbled uh, play mats, um, but I do have a sort of a village mat with like roads and stuff, which I suppose you could probably get away with. Or uh, I might just uh, use these uh, from like Dead Zone, um, which are a little bit more science, science fiction looking, but um, I think they'd just do the job for, for for me just playing on my own. So that is uh, the Gangs of Rome, uh, the Gangs of Rome collection. Um, I suppose the only other things I could show you is um, I've got a couple of uh, Roman um, fountains uh, which uh, I picked up. So this, these make quite good scenery. Um, so there's one. Uh, again, that these are by like Sarissa from the Roman range, and this little tiny one here, which actually used up uh, what I had left of my water effect. So it's kind of like a sort of a semi semi working fountain that's kind of like perhaps stopped and it's just kind of dra dra sort of dra draining dry. Um, I, think kept, I think they came out quite cool. I think they're quite cheap as well. So, uh, obviously I have actually got a few other bits of uh, Roman terrain. Um, I've got like a whole bunch of like, um, it's like a Roman market market site, so you get like loads of like little tables and little um, covers and stuff like that, um, which I kind of all stocked up behind me, I can't be bothered to really get them out. Um, and also, uh, I've actually got a full on like Roman temple as well, um, which is like fully built, but I haven't actually started that yet. Um, and... Uh, I probably won't start that for a while because it's uh, again it's going to be uh, I think it's even bigger than, than the temple that you get in this set and it's it's quite a hefty model um, so I think that is about it really I'm, I'm, I'm kind of um, I'm, I'm kind of really looking forward to having a little game of this um, the uh, the rule book itself I'll just give you a quick sort of flick flick for it it's really well done it's like it's nice uh, quality paper it's um it's not particularly long, it's only like, uh, what is it, like 30, 31 pages. Um, it's, it's full of like really nice artwork and loads of colour pictures. Um, and it's all like really nice, simple to read text. Um, and obviously this is like the proper uh, map that you can get. Um, but I wasn't going to pay like... 40 or 50 pounds for 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 another battle mat just just for uh, for for me playing Gangs of Rome which I'll probably end up just playing on my own or, or, or with the odd friend um uh you know it's not as if I'm going to be sort of playing this hardcore it's just like one of those side filler games which I thought was you know fairly cheap to to uh to outlay to actually get uh, enough figures and, and equipment to to start I think um Probably spent about maybe a little over a hundred pounds to to get everything that I need to play this game, which I think's in these days for for sort of wargaming is is actually pretty good. 
Um, and the other thing, of course, that I forgot to mention was that also in the blisters with the figures, you get an extra dice as well, which is really handy. So you end up with like a whole bunch of, uh, of Roman numeral dice, because it's all like a D6, D6 system. Okay, I'm uh, going to wind this up. It's another 40 minute video. I, I must admit, I wasn't expecting it to be 40 minutes. Um, so, uh, still got plenty of stuff to uh, to do. Uh, and hopefully, um, I'll get some more videos up fairly soon. Uh, so, until next time, uh, please, uh, I'm, having, I'm definitely having some, uh, win some uh, the editor that I use for my videos uh, is Windows Movie Maker. And... Uh, for some bizarre reason, um, the video format that my video camera takes uh, are, are like VLC. And for some bizarre reason, my laptop version of uh, Windows Movie Maker takes VLC files. But my the latest version that I downloaded onto my computer, uh, my desktop computer, uh, doesn't like VLC files at all for some bizarre reason. So I'm actually going to try and hunt down another uh, free editor program because I'm not I'm certainly not a master of editing and I you know generally what I do is I just like putting like an intro and an outro on um, and, and that's more or less it and um, the my dystopian wars video I had to basically in the end just upload straight you know copy it to my computer and then upload it straight to, to, to YouTube without having to without being able to actually put a uh, a little intro and a little outro on. Um, so in this particular video, which I'll probably end up having to do it again, um, so if there's no sort of intro or outro, um, please feel free to comment, please like the video if you liked it, and uh, subscribe if you're not, uh, because it's a good way of uh, getting notified when I do put videos up. Uh, and uh, catch you next time.